Today on Passion for Food, we're going to make one of my favorite one-pot dishes, chicken and broccoli. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate having a huge pile of dirty dishes once I'm done cooking, and if you feel the same way, you're absolutely going to love this. And the amount of flavor we're able to pack in here is really no poultry matter. And speaking of poultry, let's go ahead and get started here and talk about our chicken. Now, we can use just about any cut we would like here, but boneless, skinless chicken thighs are hands down my favorite. Now, you might be thinking, hey, those aren't boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Yeah, I like to buy these whole because if I want to roast them, I want them uh, bone in, skin on. And if I want boneless, skinless chicken thighs, it's super easy just to remove the skin and bone ourselves. Not only can we save a ton of money that way, but I'm going to show you how to take these leftover bones and skins and turn them into some of the best chicken stock on earth. Now, I know you might be feeling a little chicken about trying to bone these yourself, but it's easy. Once we've removed the skin, you just want to lay it what was skin side down, and with a sharp knife, run straight down the bone like that. And then we just want to cut along the sides to get that separating from our chicken thigh. Once we can get this top joint separated, the rest goes a whole lot easier. It's actually a lot harder to get this on camera than it is to actually do it. I'll try and turn it here so you can see as we're cutting to separate the bone from the meat. Once we have this top joint separated, we can use it as a handle to help guide the knife through the rest of the process. And keep in mind, this doesn't have to be perfect. If the thigh winds up in two pieces, it's no big deal. We're going to wind up cutting this into small chunks anyway. If you're wondering if you can use chicken breast for this, you can, but it has a tendency to dry out, so you're going to want to cut the pieces a little bigger, and I definitely think the dark meat of the thigh has a lot more flavor. Now, of course, we could just buy boneless, skinless chicken thighs, but let me ask you something. Do you also buy chicken stock? Because if so, we can totally be killing two birds with one stone here, so to speak. I'll show you how to turn these leftover chicken thigh bones and skins into some of the easiest and richest chicken stock you'll ever see. Check out the link in the top right here for that video. Anyway, now that we've taken stock of the situation, let's go ahead and slice up our chicken thighs. You'll notice as you're cutting these, all the different muscle groups, I try and cut along those just to make things easier on myself, but ultimately that's not going to matter all that much. So let's just cut these into some kind of generalized strip-like shape, and then we will cut across into nice little chicken chunks. Now, the size and shape of these are going to be fairly irregular, just because of the nature of chicken thighs, so don't worry too much about that. And while we finish here, have you heard about the chicken that only liked to lay eggs on the barn roof? Yeah, she wound up with an egg roll. Anyway, foul jokes aside, let's go ahead and season this generously with salt and pepper. I know that looks like a lot of salt, but keep in mind, that is a lot of chicken. This is going to be our primary seasoning for the dish, so don't be tempted to skimp here. An under-seasoned dish is going to be bland and disappointing. That was probably about two teaspoons of salt and pepper to taste. And once we're happy with that, we still need to get these seasonings distributed, so let's give it the old patented mix-around. Now that we've had that stirring experience, let's go ahead and transfer our chicken into our Dutch oven. I've got about a tablespoon of oil in here. And here's the trick to taking this dish from good to amazing. We want to sear this chicken. And I don't mean a little bit. We really, really want to sear this chicken. But don't rush it. We need to let it sit for a couple of minutes over high heat before we try and stir it around. Otherwise, it'll stick and you won't form a good crust on your chicken. And we're not just going to sear one side. We want to repeat this process multiple times. We want to let it sit for a while and then stir it around. You can see not only are we getting some beautiful color on our chicken, but we're forming a great layer on the bottom of the pot as well. That's just going to add extra flavor later on. But I'm going to continue searing a couple more times here. So let it sit for a little while and then stir it around. The number of times you want to repeat this cycle is really up to you. The beauty of using the dark meat is that it's very, very hard to dry it out. So you pretty much can't overcook this. So I'm really just going to sear till my heart's content. This really is going to add an amazing depth of flavor to our final chicken and broccoli. 
After about 10 minutes, I was happy with this. Just look at that golden brown goodness. So let's go ahead and turn this down to low for now, and we're going to add one large onion. It's always striking how much flavor that adds. And we're also going to add a couple cloves of chopped garlic. And unfortunately, the broccoli was a little too big for me to hand chop, but that's about two crowns worth. Let's just give all that a quick toss to get it coated in that chicken-infused oil. Your taste buds will thank me later. And last but not least, we have our rice. I'm going to be using one cup of long grain rice today. You could use whatever kind of rice you like, but the cooking times are going to vary depending on the type of rice you use. And for our one cup of long grain rice, we need two cups of water. So let's go ahead and turn the heat back up, and we want to give this a good mix. We want to try and get all of this rice submerged. Any of the rice that's sticking up a little will wind up a little crunchy, and nobody likes crunchy rice. At this point, it's a good idea to add another pinch of salt, but once this comes up to a simmer, we're going to go ahead and cover and simmer on low for about 20 minutes. To check if it's cooked, we just want to slide a spoon all the way down and scoot everything aside. You shouldn't be able to see any liquid. If you do, just put the lid back on and give it another couple of minutes. But this was perfect, so let's go ahead and grab a plate. And don't let the dish's humble appearance fool you. All that special attention we pay to searing means this is just packed with wonderful chicken flavor. The fun thing with a dish like this is we can mix and match in all kinds of different flavor combinations. So I really hope I've inspired you to try and make your own one-pot dinner. If you do and you try some fun flavor combination, let me know in the comments below what it was and how it turned out. I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future recipes. And check out one of our other great videos playing on the screen now. This has been Graham with Passion for Food.